So in this uh, tech preview video, I want to show you something about working with text in NPS. Um, tech preview because it's not yet finished, it's not yet on the master, but it's extremely interesting and so I want to share it. So a guy called Sasha Lison has built uh, what's called the NPS multi-line editor. Traditionally, editing multi-line text didn't work very well in NPS because there was no editor primitive. Uh, you only had to, you, know, you had to use a, a set of separate lines but then you couldn't do a cross-line editing. So that was annoying. So the first thing Sasha has built is um, such a multi-line editing thing. So you can, uh, you can edit text over, over multiple <coughs> lines. Now, uh, enter, pressing enter gives you a new line. Uh, you can select with the usual shift way. You can even uh, select shift up and, you know, just the way you would edit regular text. So that alone is a big improvement. But he went on quite a bit. So what he built is um, also something that the embedder team has been wishing for for a long time, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, and that's uh, support for rich text or for mixed content or for embedded notes or wiki or however you want to call it. Here's the point. So in one of these multi-line text edits, you can now embed other things. For example, something like that. This is now a link. Right? So this is a link embedded in text. And this link is an actual pointer to, in this case, the class abstract collection. And of course, you can make that point to any class. And since it's a real pointer, if you rename it, you see, this is renamed along with it. And so you can now have actual, real, MPS nodes, instances of concepts, in this case it's the link tag, um, <clears throat> you can embed them with regular text. And here is another example. You can uh, refer to parameter, parameter E, and you can add some text. And of course, if you rename E, right, the thing is uh, renamed along with it. So this is Javadoc, a prototype that Sasha built. And of course, what we're going to do is we're going to build a C doc like thing. However, what we have done so far is something different. And um, I'm personally not a very big fan of Javadoc or C doc like things because to tell a real story, to write tutorials, you can't do that in comments. <coughs> so what you typically do is you take uh, LaTeX and you write something, but then of course you have to somehow manually keep the, the LaTeX text and the, uh, the code in sync, and that's annoying. And so here is uh, what we can do now instead. We can actually, we've created a new language in Embedder, the documentation language, and in that language you can, for example, uh, define something like a, um, a section, section one, overview and then you put a paragraph and the paragraph is not one of Sasha's text boxes so here is some text and let's create another section as to uh, details then of course you can say things like we explain details in and now you can do an actual reference to as two. And of course, this is now a real pointer, so of course renaming is safe. But of course, uh, if you generate from this, you get an actual reference in the target uh, formalism. And so what we support right now is um, LaTeX and HTML. And let me show you the LaTeX because of course it looks better. So I'm going to regenerate. <coughs> and then I'm going to rebuild the PDF from that. So here's a command line I can call build LaTeX. It's a little script. We built that essentially uh, calls the LaTeX renderer. And here is now our document. And here is the text. And here, of course, is an actual reference. So that that is useful, and uh, but it's easy. Now, what you really want is integration with code. So let me uh, step back to another example that I've already prepared here is uh, a somewhat more complex document and you can see a number of things. First of all, we've created a number of formatting things like emphasize and code formatting. So this word struct is uh, rendered in you know monospaced font so that it looks like code. You can also um, refer to actual module contents. Here is a 
struct, the track, track point struct, track point struct, and by writing an example is the and then using the at cc for c contents. Uh, it's generated to just the name of this thing, but of course if you rename it here, then the reference renames along with it. In other words, um, your the, the words you use to reference things in the document is automatically in sync with the name of the element in the code. So let me show you how this looks. Um, da -da 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 -dum. I got to change this to use the overview document here. This is kind of the build configuration that specifies uh, how the generated document looks like. Um, here you specify it's LaTeX, here you could do the alternative HTML. So let me just uh, wait a second and go back to the build the LaTeX. Da -da 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 -dum. Da -dum. Oops. And then you can see here the word track point is formatted in code font. You can also see that we've actually embedded code here. And the way we do that is simply by, let me go back here, by using the embed tag. So you refer to <coughs> a program element and <coughs> the point is that it's of course automatically kept in sync. If you change this to something else and you regenerate, of course, then in the generated PDF document, you automatically have this in sync. So no more copy and pasting code snippets into your documentation um, to keep it, um, let's go here, to um, have code in your, your, in your documentation, right? It's automatically inserted. And of course, that makes it much more robust, right? So a speed, you know, to something else, the rename thing. Now let's see what else we have. Um, Let's go back here. You've already seen in the PDF and, and uh, here it is this picture. And this picture is not actually a picture. It is um, a visualization. You may remember that, uh, uh, actually it's right here, that in Embedder we have these elements that can be visualized, right? For example, the executable, you can select it, you can select visualize and you get the plant UML generated diagram. Um, it usually, uh, it usually, uh, goes faster, it's just so slow because of the screen recording for some reason. And you can directly uh, refer to these things from uh, the document and you can even select the available visualizations directly. And then when you regenerate, you get the picture. And again, the picture is not static, it's automatically regenerated whenever you regenerate the document. So another kind of live integration. You can also integrate static pictures. <clears throat> so if you go back to the Hello World, you can put in an image here, and you call it, let's say, a glider, so you know what's coming, right? So we take that from the images path, and now you can actually see which images which images are available. We kind of look into the, we use code completion, look into the directory, you can select a picture. You can even look at the picture directly in the editor because it's projectional, so why not, right? And then you can uh, you can leave that here, you can see, you know, here we, well, we should start a paragraph first. Here we show a glider colon, and then you can refer to figure glider, and you know, just the way you would like to edit documents. Um, so that's what we have. We have embedded code, we have code references, we have uh, section, section references, we have the visualizations integrated, and so on. Now, of course, the whole thing is extensible. Uh, surprise, surprise. Um, so let me let me show you something. Um, let's create a new section. Force, 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 explained, paragraph, <clears throat> the force, sorry, I mistyped, I the dollar sign here, the force F is the product, I guess you, you get the point, right? product of the uh, acceleration <coughs> A, there is a bug with uh, pressing enter here, um, for some reason, it's actually a known bug, it's just not fixed yet, so you, you can't continue typing it um, because, because, of, because of the bug, but so let's create a new paragraph. Um, and the mass M, right? So we have uh, created these kind of 
math formatted things if you if you uh, generate that let's try what happens uh, let's try what happens So again, the reason why it's so slow, it's because of the screen recording. I don't know why this is the case. Maybe because it uses a lot of memory, the screen recording does. So can you please regenerate this for me? Yeah, it already started, I guess. <coughs> oh, this is annoying. Yeah, it's already kind of in the generation mode because you can't select it. Well, this is extremely slow. Again, this is not an MPS problem. That's only if you do a screen recording. Okay, anyway, so this is uh, rendered as um, normal uh, math syntax in, in LaTeX. Now, wow, this took forever. So, um, in other words, if you do that, uh, you get... Um, it looks like math. I mean, it's probably boring. So, uh, where did I put this? It's probably at the end of this. Uh, force explained, right? The force F is the product of the acceleration A and mass N. But what's much more interesting is that these things are actually variables that you can work with. So, let's create another one. Here is um, the formula. <coughs> And do an equation which now you can use code completion f equals m times a and now this is an actual c expression you can ask it for its type right you can go here right you can if you change this each of these variables have a type of course if you change that to boolean you get an error because you can't multiply boolean and uh, ints so we have kind of embedded um, real expressions here um, with type checker, uh, you could continue and embed test cases and run them in the interpreter. We've done something like that in our requirements language. Um, so it's, it's, it's complete semantic integration between prose text and real working code. Uh, this maybe reminds you a little bit of uh, Don Knuth's literate programming. So you can build systems like that and we're going to do that because it's extremely interesting. Um, and uh, well, so that's uh, essentially what I wanted to show. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And, and this thing is, of course, a separate language, right? So this, 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 again, actually, this whole integration of C stuff, all the green things, right? The green things is a separate language that uh, extends the documentation language with C integration. Um, uh, the, the, um, the, the equation stuff here is a separate language. And so it's all modular um, and it's completely integrated syntactically. And you can, of course, extend the generator so that your own stuff uh, prints nicely to LaTeX. So finally, what we're going to do as well is integrate this thing with our requirements framework because the requirements also usually include a lot of prose text and there you will be able to then from within the requirements description directly refer to scenarios and use cases and all of that being uh, refactoring safe. So that was a quick uh, tech preview uh, of what's coming in and better and um, so this once again proves the in our opinion here superior approach to DSLs uh, provided by MPS. I haven't seen something like that anywhere else. Um, and of course, we want to thank again uh, Sasha Lisson for, for building the multi-line editor widget, which is of course the enabler for all of that. Thanks for watching.